On this episode of the Globe Sports Corner, the Goshen College pep band makes a splash in front of the home crowd. We'll sit down with GC baseball coach Brad Stoltzfus to learn more about the fast approaching season. And we'll take you through the Globe highlight of the week. All that and a whole lot more is coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Welcome inside the Globe Studios on the campus of Goshen College. My name is Dante Stanton. Thanks for joining us. We've got a great episode on tap today to kick off our spring season with a few changes to the look of the show. But as always, we'll keep the best bar going strong, exclusive coverage of Maple Leaf Athletics, and it all starts right here. And it kicks off in a big way with a new addition to the Goshen College student section, making its mark in a very loud and energetic way. Seth Smith Kaufman reports from the Ruth Gundon with more on the Goshen College pep band. When you think about basketball at Goshen College, you might think of the Maple Leafs or the purple uniforms or even Dash the Squirrel. But a new thing here at the Ruth Gundon is adding to the atmosphere at basketball games, the Goshen College Pep Band. The Pep Band began playing at basketball games at the end of the fall semester under the guidance of Richard Brunson, director of the Goshen College Orchestra. One of the students came up with the idea of doing a pep band and, uh, and approached me about helping out with it. And I'm like, this is a great idea, this is perfect. He sent out requests for people to come and join and and I ordered music. And it just grew from there. Senior Jonathan Orhala was the driving force behind the start of the pep band after previous experience playing with another group. Well, I just remembered back in high school, I really enjoyed playing in my pep band and was always kind of thinking about how we didn't have one here at Goshen. And then I finally just thought, why not just kind of start one? With the new orchestra director, it was kind of a new beginning to try and see what we could change and get a some sort of new activity going. I'm hoping that with having live music, there's more interaction between the fans and the band. Brunson's goal for the band is twofold, partly adding atmosphere to the games, but also to give current and prospective students a place to perform songs they may not normally have the chance to. Live music is very different than pre-recorded music. There's, there's an energy about it that you can't get out of a recording. So I think having live music at, at an athletic event adds that energy to the crowd and the, the players on the, on the court. In spite of the fact that Goshen has been here for so long, still people in the community and students in local high schools don't know that we have opportunities to, to play and perform. You can catch the pep band playing fan favorites like Sweet Caroline and Hey Baby inside the Ruth Gundon Gymnasium during men's and women's basketball games. For Globe Sports, I'm Seth Smith Kaufman. Thanks to Seth there for the report. The next time you can catch the Pan Band rocking out in the stands is Wednesday, February 7th, for Game 1 of doubleheader action against the Marion Knights. Coming up, the baseball season approaching faster than you might think. Head coach of Maple Leaf Baseball Brad Stoltzfus joins us in studio after the break. Stay with us. You're watching the Globe Sports Corner. Do you dream of a place to belong, to begin your journey, and to believe in something bigger than yourself? A place where you aren't lost in the crowd, but are part of the team. Communication professionals are in high demand, and Goshen College will give you the tools and hands-on experience to transform your passions into a rewarding career. Begin your career in journalism and be an agent of change at the best college newspaper in the state of Indiana, The Record. Begin a filmmaking career with Five Core Media and work on Emmy-winning productions that propel graduates to Hollywood and beyond. And take our semester in LA program to get a jump start in the industry. Begin your career as a public relations major, one of the fastest growing professions in the country. Begin a rewarding broadcasting career on the air at 91.1 The Globe, the best college radio station in the nation. Be a DJ, host TV shows, and broadcast live sports. Believe in yourself and make it possible at Goshen College. Back inside the Globe Studios, my name is Dante Stanton, joined now by Brad Stoltz, who's head coach of the Goshen College baseball team. Brad, welcome inside the studios. How are you doing today? Uh, super well, and I got to mention, Dante, you're just absolutely looking stunning. Sharper than a knife. Thank you Seriously, very much. Seriously, looking great. The purple suit, I got it for Christmas, and I've, I've worn it twice now, and it fit the, per the it was perfect Beautiful. for the sports corner. Beautiful. We got that purple coloring, it perfect. works out well. I Beautiful. was thinking of the Maple Leafs. I was yep. thinking of the Maple Makes Leafs. Makes sense. Now, the last time we, we sat to talk uh, 
Fervor Globe Sports and learn a little bit about the, the new position that you're in here at yeah. Ocean College. Uh, you were just starting to get into the fundamentals of what it meant to be the head coach of the Goshen College baseball team. It's been several months now. What's changed since? Yeah, I, I, I've got to say I'm really proud of this group. Um, they, they've really bought in. They're, they're focused, you know, and as the season's coming up, like, a big thing for our team is giving each other a little bit of grace, you know, here and there. So, so the guys give me grace when I slip up and, and, and vice versa. And so, um, you know, I couldn't do it without, without these guys. So I, I, I've learned a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, small things to kind of take care of on a day to day basis. But, you know, being out on the field, being with the guys always brings me an energy. As a former player who graduated not too long ago, mm -hmm. how do you feel your connection is to your players? I mean, uh, you're not that far from graduation, graduated in the class of 2018, and you sure. played for the Maple Leafs. Do you feel like that strengthens your connection with the players? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been able to relate to the guys, and, and I think that they can relate as well, just given the fact that I've been through the program, you know, especially when I have lunch with recruits, I tell them, hey, I was like literally in your shoes 10 years ago. Um, so, no, it's been great. You know, I can connect with the guys, uh, you know, just kind of on a different level. Um, and same with some of my assistants as they've also been through the program. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been really good to see uh, these guys grow um, in a lot of different ways. Talk to me about what would you say is your biggest lesson learned from over the past few months, the past fall ball season? Yeah, it's a good question. Biggest lesson learned, um, job's not easy. You know, um, there's a lot that kind of goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, taking care of 40 guys and, and all their, you know, separate needs. Um, but ultimately, it's been great. Like, you know, again, just being out on the field and actually doing the baseball part of it is a ton of fun. Uh, it's, it's been great. Have you run into many uh, inclement weather issues and things like that? I mean, is it, are you just kind of stuck in the gym practicing right now? Right now, yes. Uh, in the fall, we had a... We had pretty decent weather um, in the fall, just kind of in general. Uh, we hadn't really had to cancel practices or move inside. But, yeah, as of now, um, you know, we try to get outside on those 40-degree days when we can. But now with the snow on the ground, the, the parking lot's a little bit wet. We've been trying to make the most of our indoor space, uh, make it as efficient and effective uh, each practice day to day as possible. Let's talk a little bit more about 2024. I'm sure you're very excited for the first full season as coach. What was the first thing you kind of did as a motivator in the fall ball season? Um, I mean, honestly, just being able to play against outside competition, you know, guys getting a chance to be on the field, wear the jerseys, uh, play baseball against competition. Um, of course, when guys enter squad scrimmage, you know, within each other, there's some of that competition. But when you get a chance to – go to some other team's field or have another team come to come to the Sarge. Uh, it's it's awesome, you know, and and it's really unlike anything else, just being a part of the sport, um, especially for a program I have so much respect for. And, uh, you know, putting on that purple jersey, you know, just means so much to all the guys. And and I try to let them know not to take it for granted, because, you know, when I was a, a volunteer assistant in 2020, you know, we were obviously looking uh, looking pretty sharp. You know, we had a uh, 9, 10, 11 impact seniors that year. And then obviously in the middle of March, you know, our season got cut short. And all the se uh, seniors were done playing baseball just like that. So anything like that could happen. Um, so just trying to tell the guys, like, you have to just play as hard as you can every single time you get the chance. Believe it or not. First game right around the corner. I can't believe this. We're less than a month away. February 3rd is the first date. It's out in Kentucky. Yep. How well would you say the team is prepared for that first date? Uh, pretty good so far. Now, I will say we do have a couple things we need to sharpen up and, and uh, you know, on the defensive side and, and with pitching, with catching a little bit, um, approaches at the plate, like all that stuff as the season goes along will sharpen up. Um, and, again, the first time that we'll be on a field in the spring bring uh, will be on that first day of games. You know, we obviously in Goshen can't quite make it out on our uh, field that's co currently covered in snow, melting as we speak. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing is trying to kind of get the feet wet a little bit, at, you know, in that first week. Um, and just like last year, Barberville, Kentucky is projected to be mid-50s by the time we get down there. 
Um, and the field was in good condition at Union when we went last year, so we're hoping for, for the same, hoping, hoping to get all four of our games in. One of the last things I want to talk about here, let's talk individuals. Let's talk uh, maybe some surprise impact players. Who's going to come out and surprise some folks this year for, for GC Baseball? Um, I tell you what, I mean, our freshman pitchers were, were our best pitchers last year. Um, you know, collectively in terms of a class, they were some of our more consistent arms. Um, and we have some freshmen coming in this year uh, that we hope can do the same. Uh, Baylor Orcutt is a name uh, to look out for. He's a freshman pitcher. He projects to, to throw some innings for us, certainly. Um, we're hoping A.J. Len can have another good year for us. Uh, he's a sophomore. Um, and then we got some guys, uh, you know, J.P. Hill, Braxton Pratt, Brody Kennedy, all guys that, you know, we hope to see on the mound in some big innings for us. Um, Lance Wilson is a, is a returning sophomore. We uh, project to, to um, throw some big innings for us, too. So, you know, c kind of those younger guys, you know, and that's the whole thing about Goshen. I tell the recruits, too, like, Goshen's a place of opportunity. Like, when I came in 2014, you know, I didn't come with very much of an athletic scholarship, right? Like I didn't hit too well my senior year of high school, but shoot, I went out and played as hard as I could every single day. And it led to an opening day, you know, starting spot. And I played 199 games after that point. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys are, are in similar situations. Curtis Hoffman, Nate Pinedo on the offensive side uh, are guys that we know we can kind of slide in in different positions as necessary. Um, Curtis is a, is a transfer freshman. He was going to come last year, um, and something happened that, he, that prevented him to do that, but he's back this year. And Nate Pinedo, <clears throat> excuse me, already one of the hardest workers on our team, just kind of goes about his business, and, and those guys, uh, freshman-wise, are, are going to see some, some time on the field. We hope they make a big impact for us. Very exciting stuff, Coach. Appreciate Definitely. you joining us here in the studios today. Thank you. Uh, and good luck throughout the season. Again, first game coming up on February 3rd. I appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Coming up, Sports Talk with Tyson, a new segment where our very own Tyson Miller helps us break down the biggest trends in Maple Leaf athletics and what to watch for in the coming weeks with spring sports already kicking off. That's up next on the Globe Sports Club. Goshen College, everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique supportive community, right here in Northern Indiana. Cutting edge academics, real world learning and small personalized classes make the difference. All surrounded by world class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Inside the Globe Studios, I'm Dante Stanton, now joined by Tyson Miller, broadcaster extraordinaire and a bit of an expert in all things Maple Leaf Athletics. What have you got for us today in this inaugural edition of Sports Talk with Tyson? Well, Dante, we're going to talk about some men's and women's basketball today. We're getting into the late seasons, and we're going to look at where they are in this point in the year. We'll start with women's basketball, Dante. They're 8-11 and 11 overall, 3-6 and six in conference play. They're actually on a nine-game losing streak. This is somewhat of a theme for them this year as they started the season losing two games, then they won eight games in a row. They've now lost their last nine games. So they'll play at Bethel University this Saturday at 1 p.m. as part of the U.S. Highway 20 Cup. I want to learn a little bit more about this team here. They're kind of a confusing team. Uh, what would you say is their biggest key to getting back on track at this point in the year? Well, Dante, they're exactly halfway through their conference season. And a lot of these recent losses have been really close, easily flippable. They lost to Taylor by just seven. A couple other games were really close at halftime. This is the team that has the ability to hang in there with just about any team in the conference. The problem is they're relying a lot on Sign Muhammad, might even say too much. We saw this happen a couple times recently. If Muhammad's not putting up a double-double and really dominating the post, this team struggles. The other big thing, turnovers. Uh, the last five games, they've had 20, 19, 17, 19, and 20 turnovers. I mean, that really speaks a lot to what's been going on. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more now, still about basketball, but now switching over to the men's side. They're having a little bit of a rough start to the year. Can you explain that for us? Definitely reasons to be optimistic, Dante, but you got to take your losses with it. I think they move into their second half of the conference season. There's a couple games that they should have circled on the calendar. There's games they could flip. They lost to St. Francis by nine. They lost to Mount, lost to Mount Vernon Nazarene by five, Taylor by eight. 
they're on the cusp. This is a young team. They're trying to be rebuild with a new head coach and Kyle Caps. And it's hard, Dante. There's a lot of things they're doing right. A couple big halves have shown what this team could be in the future. They were down by four to Grace at halftime. Like this is a team that can hang in there. Grace was the number one team in the country. So they're building around Carson Jenkins right now. He's had an excellent season. He's averaging 17 and a half points per game. That's the kind of player that you really need to stick around. But unfortunately, yes, Dante, they are still looking for that first win on the season. Let's move on from basketball now. Let's talk about the Everett Student Athlete of the Week. Incredible performances lately from Daniel Murphy. Talk a little bit just about the greatness that we've seen out of him very early in his career. Just, yeah, absolutely, Dante. An outstanding performance from him. He's a freshman on the track and field team. He set a new school record in the 60 meters uh, for the second time this season already. This past Saturday, he finished second overall in the 60 and the 200 meters at the meet. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's January. The season is very, very young. I was talking to one of his teammates last night uh, who called him a hardworking, enthusiastic, passionate, impact freshman brings a new spark to the sprint squad. So he's going to be fun to watch uh, for the next couple of years. Definitely deserving, I would say, of that Everence Student Athlete of the Week moniker. Absolutely. All right, well, Tyson, thanks for joining us. We're looking forward to more episodes of Sports Talk with Tyson as the season goes along. Coming up, a look at our Globe Highlight of the Week, and Tyson returns with the details on what's next for Maple Leaf Athletics. Stick with us. You're watching the Globe Sports Corner. So you just graduated from Ocean College. What experiences prepared you for this job? Where do I begin? Right block to Buchanan, and Buchanan is stripped by Jenkins. He'll bring it up the other way. Jenkins stops his roll. Up top, Samillion, three, buries it. Three to the lead. Maple Leafs on the board early. That was our global highlight of the week. Colin Eccles on the call there. We've got a great look at the past few weeks of Maple Leaf Athletics. Now it's time to take a look at what's coming up. And for that, I'll turn to my co-host Tyson Miller for a look at the Maple Leaf Minute. Tyson. Thanks, Dante. Lots of events upcoming for the Maple Leafs. Tomorrow, the men's and women's tracks team head to the Bill Klinger Classic at Grand Valley State University. They then head to Taylor on Saturday for the Trojan Invite. Men's and women's basketball heads to Bethel University on Saturday as well for a U.S. Highway 20 Cup matchup. The women's game starts at 1. The men's game starts at 3. The Bethel's men's team is ranked 23rd in the country right now. And Bethel currently leads the U.S. Highway 20 Cup with 5.5 points to Goshen's 2.5. Later in the day, men's volleyball opens their season at home against Lakeland University at 4 p.m. The men's volleyball team went 9-12 and 12 last year and looking to build off of that with a new head coach. Catch that game on the globe. Alyssa McDonald and Trent Sillette on the call for that one. Next week on Tuesday the 30th, men's volleyball takes on Calumet College of St. Joseph at home. The ones, that one starts at 7 p.m. Then on Wednesday, the men's and women's basketball teams back in action at home against the University of St. Francis. Women's game tips at 6, and the men tip at 8. Myself and Dante Stanton on the call for that one. That's what's upcoming for your Goshen College Maple Leafs. Thanks, Tyson. That'll do it for this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. To keep up with all things Globe Sports, make sure you give us a follow on our socials, all at 911 The Globe, Facebook, Instagram, and the X app. While you're at it, check out the Globe Radio app as well. Now there's even more ways to stream the Globe 24-7, 365, including full coverage of our live sports broadcast throughout the year. And finally, you can head over to globeradio.org for more Globe updates so that you don't miss a beat. That'll do it for this edition of the Globe Sports Corner. Join us next week for some exciting announcements about the Globe News Report. For the whole Globe Sports crew, I'm Dante Stanton. Thanks for watching.